was pretty smooth though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. Uh, basketball is a game of runs. Credit um, Kentucky. They made some really tough shots in that first half and obviously was able to convert uh, our turnovers, which were 11 turnovers into 16 points and go 27, I believe, for, from, for 27 free throws. That's a sum of 43 points, whereas we turned them over 13 times, converted only four points out of that and 17 points from the free throw line. The disparity of 43 and 21, uh, that's the ball game. Uh, I thought our guys fought, but in that one stretch, uh, we wasn't able to get a basket. We had the looks, the same looks that we got in the first half, the first uh, 10 minutes of the second half, but those last 10 minutes from the 10, 20 mark to 40 seconds, we wasn't able to, we missed, missed about 13 straight shots, uh, but we did get to the free throw line, which obviously allowed us uh, to, to stay within the distance uh, that we did. Okay, we'll have a question to the student athlete uh, first. Coach, you'll slide the microphone over. Please. Thanks for Noah. Raise your hand, we'll get the microphone to you. Hey, Noah. Um, after this loss, and it's been now five straight losses to high major opponents, how are y'all in the locker room going to stay motivated and keep working to improve this season? Um. We are a, a well-connected group, so we're never gonna, you know, fall or, or you know, we're gonna if we get if we get hit, we're gonna get right back up. We just gotta keep fighting, um, you know, and uh, can consistently, you know, keep keep playing as hard as we possibly can. We know we're right there. We're so close, um, man. We just gotta keep keep working and keep playing and uh, and uh, get ready for Saturday. All we can do is just get ready for the next game and, uh, and continue to fight. No, during that stretch, the coach talked about where you couldn't make a basket. Do you feel like you guys got good shots? They wouldn't go in, or do you think Kentucky turned it up defensively? I, f I feel like we got good shots. Um, you know, it was just a little stretch where we couldn't we couldn't see the ball go through the hoop. Um, I mean, credit to them, they did play good defense. They ramped it up, but I feel like we did get good shots, and um, you know, we just couldn't get some of them to fall. Any other questions for the student athlete? So um, there were, in the first half, there were three stretches where uh, for almost three minutes or longer, uh, Kentucky didn't get a field goal on y'all. So I'm just wondering what that defensive um, game plan was and how you think it went for y'all. Yeah, uh, our goal as a team is to always, um, you know, we're trying to get three stops in a row. Um, and we were just getting in the stretches and we were playing great defense. And uh, yeah, it's our goal um, defensively. So when we when we're able to go on runs like that defensively, that's that's what we're trying to do. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Questions, Coach? Ian, uh, raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. Um, Dennis, you played Kentucky at a, kind of a similar point in the season last season. What, what do you, how do you see this team as maybe different from, from last season's Kentucky team? Well, what I see is this. I see some great one-on-one -on -one players who can make shots. And you start with Rob Dillingham. He's probably the best ISO player in college basketball. Uh, that's what I believe. Uh, you have Reed coming off the bench, but he's capable of getting double digits as well. Uh, you look at uh, Trey Mitchell, who is a stretch four, stretch five. He can make shots. You look at Justin Edwards, his best basketball, you know, obviously is in front of him, but he's just as athletic great player seen him play a lot in high school but really Antonio Reeves is the is the heart and soul of this team and he's well connected with each each player and when you look at his emotional intelligence although he had nine field goal attempts he was probably cheering louder for Rob than anybody and when you have that connectivity and you're able to play a style that opens the court up a little bit Oscar Toshibwe is a dominant player but he, he also requires uh, the ability to take up the space in the middle. Now they're five out. You have um, Brashaw with the ability to make a, make a jump shot. But they have versatility. They take care of the basketball. They are a three-point threat. Coach, got to be proud of the fight today, but you know, two straight games where the team struggled to score down the stretch. I think Georgia, there was a, you know, five-minute field goal drought on Saturday. You know, 
How do you just unlock that last level where it feels like the screw's just, just right there? I mean, what do you guys have to do to, to well, get to that next level? we got to make the open shots. And when you look at the shots that we've got, and I'll have to watch the film to get the chronological order of it, I, I probably would, would do the same. What I'm happy about that didn't take place last game was the fact that in that stretch we were able to get to the free throw line a little bit. And last game, we didn't. We only shot seven free throws against Georgia, and Georgia shot 21. Tonight, we gave up 27 points on the free throw line, but we got more free throws. The game is won and lost. When you can see the ball go in that many times, that gets you a rhythm. I'm just glad we were able to stay in a little rhythm. We got to be able to close the gap, get, the, get to those tough baskets in the paint. But our shooters were able to shoot, and maybe at that point in time, we got to concentrate a little bit more. So. Um, last week, or sorry, Saturday, we saw you play with really five guys that got a majority of the playing time. This time we saw it a little bit more spread out, but it was mostly with the veteran guys. Um, was there a reason not to play the freshmen and play Tanjay? Or uh, what, I guess what was the kind of idea behind the substitution pattern? Well, uh, one of our freshmen is out, um, didn't, didn't make the trip um, due to medical sickness, et cetera. Um, you know, just a decision. Those guys were playing well. I think John Tonje was a plus 10 when, in that first half, and Mabor Jacques was a plus, I want to say, 14 in the first half. But those guys ended up being the only two guys in the positive. And I thought physically their strength, uh, physically their strength was able uh, or allowed us to do certain things defensively. Okay. Is that it? All right. Coach, thank you very much. Thanks. Happy.